I got the cash in the bag, stadium packed Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, doing no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up, cash in the bag Stadium packed, baby, I'm bad Alright, decided to do a little uh, touch video on lapping the valves in I've done the first valve on cylinder one, the intake And I use... I have some Felpro uh, lapping compound. This stuff's super duper old. It's well over, it's almost as old as I am. And when I went to uh, mechanic school back in the late 80s. So anyways, I only use the fine most of the time. I mean, if you got some something that's got some, you know, moderate pits or little minor pits in it, you might want to use the coarse. But these valves and the seats all look really good. So I'm just sticking with the fine. Um, I'll go over and show you how much I usually put on there and the kind of tool you'd use. But I've already lapped this valve in, it looks really good. And that one would go in this position here. So we'll grab the next one. Um, before you install them and everything, make sure you wipe them all down so you're not putting dirt inside your valve guides. Make sure there's no oil or anything on the surfaces. Uh, I just dab a little bit on my finger. This is probably way too much. And you just put a couple little dabs on the actual uh, valve head itself. And then you can put it in the actual valve guide, like so. And then you'll need little suction cup tools. This stuff, it may be in tubes, and these kind of tools are available at your uh, local auto parts store generally um, and these usually come in a tool they'll have a really big one. Oh, here it is like so um, and they'll have a smaller one so they're for various different valves these valves sometimes are a pain in the butt because they got those big stamps in there and they're uh, concaved out on the valve so it makes it sometimes a booger to actually get it to get suction on there but you just need to wet the uh, interior surface on it Smush it on there like a suction cup and then spin it around a couple times to spread that material out and then you just rub it and then you'll hear it get quieter as you rub it and then you pick it up turn it about 10 20 degrees put it back down and put it back down on there again and then just do that until you feel comfortable seeing that those letters make it pain of butt some people will take and do it from the back side and get a piece of like vinyl hose or something that'll snap over the head of the um, the valve and then put it in the drill and do it. Um, you can do it that way, it works. But anyways, you do this for a good couple minutes for each one. It is kind of time consuming, but you just do it until you hear the qu get quieter and you pick it up, rotate it, and then reset your hands and do it. And then once you get it all done, Take and get you a, keep you a, a rag handy and wipe the residual material, excess material off. And you want to look at your, you'll see it, it'll have a dingy gray color. This one still needs a little bit more. There's still a little bit of uh, deposit on there. Um, so I will, uh, there's still some of this, the, the grit in there, but I'll add just a tad. Make sure I got enough in there. And like I said, just suction cup and go to town. It doesn't take a traumatic amount of pressure. Just, just a little down pressure on it. And um, now if you've replaced valve guides, you know, that's kind of more work for uh, uh, a machine shop. You know, engine machine shop, um, when they set the new seats or whatever, they're going to make sure that the valve seats are concentric to the valves. Um, so uh, if you're wanting to double check, make sure you got good concentricity of the, of the valve seat to the valve. When you're lapping it in, you can use like a, a blue Sharpie or something and mark on the valves and see what it looks like. Um, if you don't have, if you got skipped coverage, 
on here, you're gonna those valve seats need to be recut. Um, but if you're able to uh, um, lap it on there and get a good solid gray ring around the valve and the valve seat, then you have to check both. Most of the time you'd see your problem would be in the valve seat, not the valve itself. But there could be an instance where the valve could be the problem. Um, so that would require the valve seat to be recut. But other than that, just so just running that through there. Clean off the residual again. And then inspect your valve. Make sure you got no blanks. You got a good solid uh, graying on the surface. And then as this valve does, so at that point um, you would take and clean the material out of the valve seat, wiping it really, really well because this stuff is gritty. So you don't want to leave uh, abrasives in your engine. So that looks good. Pardon my head. I'm just eyeballing, make sure everything looks good. I got good concentricity of the route around the uh, valve seat. The valve itself looks good, so that chalks it up. And so basically, I have to do this to every valve in the entire head. So these are done. Um, I'm not going to do a video on every one of these, so I'm going to do them. This gives you an idea what you need. You need uh, the, they come in different brands. This particular brand is Felpro. Um, it's a, a lapping compound and it's got fine and coarse and like I said for the the condition these were in great condition I'm only going to use the fine and it only required just a couple minutes of lapping of each one and I'll do this throughout the head and then go ahead and put the new valve stem seals on and assemble all the springs and everything back on it and this head will be done and be ready to be installed so anyways that's that, and if we have anything else, we'll touch base. See ya. All right, I just wanted to show real quick. I've lapped in all of the uh, intake valves, um, so they're all done. So what I'm, I'm doing is I'm going to put the stem seals on the intake side to help hold the valves in place while I do the other side. And then when I get them all done, then I can put the uh, springs on so what I do is I put a little oil on the stem um, Install it It's kind of feel because I can't see behind this, on this Workbench the oil itself helps hold it on there quite well and Take the stem seal have a little q-tip here And I put a little oil inside that And then you slide it over the end of the valve and you'll feel it go past the notches on the uh, the, whole, the valve keepers are in. And I use a socket, it's uh, about the outside diameter from out here, and the hole's big enough that the valve can, stem can go in. And then you just push it on. And then when you get it to the actual uh, uh, valve guide, you'll give it a little push and you'll feel it snap. Don't push any more than that. That's it. Once it's on there, then you get your valve, your, uh, valve stem seal in. So that's just covering that. I'm gonna get the rest of them done and then we'll do the springs. All right, the, uh, we're back. Um, I'm starting to get the, getting ready to start assembling the engine. Uh, wanted to touch base. I got all the uh, cups in, so the head's ready to go. Um, I've been, I had ordered a bunch of seals, replaced some of the oil seals, so I just put the new oil seal that goes in for the alternator drive. And I got the crank sitting in place, alternator drives put in place. Um, I replaced this bearing back here because I wanted to, I'm going to sandblast it, I didn't want, it's an open bearing, so I knocked that bearing out of here and it's since replaced it. Um, the uh, main lower or the upper journal bearings are in just in case you want to know i actually label before i put them out so i don't know if you can see them through the bag that i actually have 
which one was the top, which one was the bottom, and which journal it came out of, so I knew which one to put it back into. So all the labels, or all the uh, journal bearings were labeled. Um, the uh, so, so far, I'm waiting on my uh, ultrasonic cleaner to heat up, because the bolts that need thread lock on them, some of them got oil on them, and I want to uh, clean them up so I can uh, put uh, fresh thread lock, the ones that are exterior. Um, I spent the evening last night repowder coating all of the exterior uh, case bolts. So those have been uh, powder coated. Um, so they'll be nice and fresh. Um, all the, 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 the lower crankcase or the oil pan, I got it painted or sandblasted and painted. Um, and the uh, chain cover that was uh, that thing was nasty it was loaded with grease and stuff it took a long time to clean that one up but it got cleaned up and then sandblasted and painted again last night so this is just touching base um, as soon as I get the stuff clean and I get the lower half section assembled I'll touch base back um, also I'm using for my assembly lube on the bearings I'm using the Permatex Ultra Slick uh, to put on all the bearings. Used to use oil. Decided to give this stuff a try. I've seen a couple other uh, mechanics use those. So I figured I'd give it a try. And I got all new seals. Just so you know, if you go to take your engine apart, these are special seals. They're flanged. So you can't just find those randomly. So I get it, you know, order these at Yamaha part. Um, which one is it? Um, the one that's on the uh, on the just the plain cover side, which would be on the right side of the engine, it's a blank seal, but it's flanged. So the seal rides. There's a groove for this, the flange to ride in. So you just can't just get any ordinary oil seals and replace them. You have to actually get the Yamaha seal. Um, and uh, so anyways, I got the seals in and I'm getting ready to, like I said, install everything. Um, I did order the new uh, bend plates for the uh, actual um, sprocket. And this, I believe, goes on the clutch basket assembly. And then uh, a new seal for the um, ignition timing section. So anyways, I'll come back whenever I start to get this lower section uh, assembled and we'll touch base on assembling the top section. There's gonna be there's a little in that, if I'm not, or the, excuse me, this is the top section. A little bit in the bottom section, there is some. Um, you pretty much gotta have it all assembled so that you can put your uh, case uh, adhesive on here. I use a specific, uh, adhesive for the case and then put that on and I'll go over that and then we'll come back so anyways that's it all right I wanted to touch base real quick I thought I'd make a funny since that bolt broke off on me in there because um, it used thread lock on it and so dag them long I put a nice little note for the next person if they ever pull this apart so <laughs> heat before remove so it'll break that loosen up that uh, uh, thread lock in there enjoy all right, the, uh, the top half is assembled, connecting rods, everything's back in. Got my nice little note for the future. Um, seals are in for the ends, so they're flanged. The uh, bottom half is assembled. Um, got the shift forks in place. Um, one little note is that this rear bearing, I had to look it up. Um, it only has one half of a, a keeper, a bearing keeper. Um, I looked at it, it's not broken. It's like that. So, and looking at some of the pictures in the Haynes manual and everything, I can only see one half on there. And I looked it up in Partzilla at the exploded diagram of the transmission, and it only shows one half. So, just so you know, if you think you lost one, there's only a half of the retainer that goes in that bearing. Um, the new seals in over here. Got the uh, Permatex uh, greasy ultra slick in there. 
Um, I'm getting ready to put my three bond uh, glue on there if you're not familiar. I've used this on a couple engines, it's still good. It's a three bond, that's what I use to put on the case halves. So you put a really thin coat on all the sealing surfaces on both top and bottom. You have about 20 minutes of working time so you can't fiddle around. So I won't be videoing it when I do this. Um, and the reason you do both surfaces is so to make sure you get a good bond. But you want it being that the, the journals and stuff all tighten, you don't want to put overload it. So uh, just a small thin film all the way around and all the uh, sealing surfaces and it should be good. Anyways, I'm going to get this and then so I can get it all uh, assembled together. So I'll put the lower half down on the bottom and the upper half um, with that chain on there. It's got enough tension on it, the crank won't fall out, but I'm able to hold it while I put the uh, the upper half in. But uh, like I said, in the oil pan and the, or the oil pump and the shift linkage uh, stuff is all in and all locked tight it in, we're all ready to roll. So we'll come back in a few. All right, I have the three bond on. It's in a thin film. Uh, be careful when you get close to this, the outer journal bearings, so try not to get too close. All you're worried about is getting the actual exterior surface here and not up close to the journal bearing. I didn't put any on the actual journal bearing case sections. Same thing there, very, very little. You don't want it to squish up into the actual bearings itself but all the way around, real thin coat. Same thing here. When it came to this, since the seal's in place, I used a uh, popsicle stick that I had uh, cut a square end on it so I could actually kind of paint it in there a little bit. Same thing with there. And like I said, you don't want any close to the actual journal bearings itself. And it looks like I forgot a little section so I need to touch that up real quick. But other than that, we got it done and then I'm gonna put it together. That's it.